the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I've picked the passage from Romans today because I think it's such an encouraging passage to read. It started, I, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This passage is both challenging and comforting. It tells me that I am allowed to be me and that you are allowed to be you, but at the same time that God is working in us and through us. By coming into the presence of God as we are, being ourselves before God, we can be transformed, each of us, through this encounter. And I want to remind you that this was written by Paul, who really did know something about transformation. So don't take the idea of transformation lightly. Paul had that radical encounter with God on the road to Damascus. Through that blinding light, it led to a complete shift for him. And his anger and persecution shifted to faith and hope and love. The church he had been trying to close down, he now became its strongest advocate. Are we willing to risk all that we think we know about ourselves? Are we willing to let God's love work in us as it did in Paul? And then as we read further, this passage gets even more exciting. I'm going to read it now from the message translation. In this way, we are like various parts of the human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way round. The body we're talking about is Christ's body. Each of us finds our meaning and function as part of his body. So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvellously functioning parts in Christ's body, let us go ahead and be what we were made to be, without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. This faith thing that we're doing, it's not just something we do in the privacy of our own home. God at work in our community is so much more than what any of us could do or imagine on our own. And there's something so exciting about the transformation that's possible when we gather together. So why are we here? What brings you here? Why do you come on a Sunday morning? What are your hopes for the time we spend together each week? Maybe it's just what you do. Perhaps you were brought up this way. But each of us has a choice. There are many other things we could do on a Sunday. It's no longer as it was where everything else was closed on a Sunday and church was the only thing open. Maybe it's a sense of belonging and there was lots of lovely belonging warm words on the, on the charts earlier. A sense of belonging to the body of Christ and a sense of belonging in this place. My hope is that this church is a place where we can each be our true selves and find that self loved and accepted and welcomed here, even though we are different. No matter why it is that you're here, underlying it, I think there's a sense of hope for the future. Hope for ourselves, hope for our community and belief in transformation. Because in Christ we each receive that complete acceptance and love. And my hope is that through that love, we each become more aware of the people that God has created us to be. As we gather in this church, my hope is that this becomes a safe place for each of us to share ourselves and to share our passions, and to in turn match those with the deepest needs of our community and our world. God's call is individual to each of us, and to each church and community. And as we gather today, and we've been talking about who we are as a church, this is not about trying to keep up with the Joneses. This is about recognising that we are enough. The people that God has placed here in this community are the people that God has called here right now to be God's light in this place. 
We are enough. This isn't about trying to become a carbon copy of any other church. It's not about trying to be something that we think we should be, or trying to look good or tick boxes. The challenge is to allow ourselves, our community, to be transformed through God's love, and to be a deeper, better version of our true selves, both as individuals and as community. And God calls us to use the gifts that we've been given of who we really are. And as part of this, as I said earlier, I think it's also about permission to let go of who we are not. Sometimes we end up doing things we feel obligated to do, doing things we feel we should do, doing things that other people have told us we need to do. Part of this discerning today is about living that command that Jesus left with his disciples, that you love one another. Our verse from John's Gospel said, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. What does that look like in this place? Imagine how infectious it would be if people could sense that love and that acceptance, that transformation at work in each of us that comes through love as they encounter us out there, each of us. My hope this morning is that through our conversations, as we've been telling the stories in this community, that you are encouraged and that you are excited, that together we have a sense of how God is already working in this church, in this place, in the people here. And I hope that in the coming weeks and months, we can continue to talk, to pray and to discern together how we are being called to go deeper with God in our faith. Before we go today, I'm going to give each of you a sheet that lists some of the areas of our work in this church and in this community at this time. As part of our ongoing conversations, it would really help us to have a clearer idea of where your sense of call is. How are you being challenged or excited or called to go deeper in this place? How are you a part of the body of Christ? And what gifts are you being called to use in this place at this time? And maybe to let go. There's lots of things on here because at the moment we're trying to do lots of things and it would help us to understand where your heart is. It's an amazing calling, an amazing identity that we, all of us together, are the body of Christ. That we belong to each other in this way. There is more to discover about ourselves in Christ than we can ever dream. And I'm glad to be your priest here as we go together on this journey of discovery.